Praise be to God. The word came about the decoration. You know, so then I was thinking about what, was, what about the decoration. And in Psalms 29, one says, Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. See, in some places, the splendor of holiness, the beauty of holiness, to worship the living God. So, it's the, in the church when you take, uh, the, the main part is the worship. That is how to, we are different from other people. See, so in the world they will go and do something and when go away, only in the churches that we all gather together and then we'll worship the living God. And he says that come and worship in the beauty of holiness. We are sinful people. So what is talk about the holiness, the beauty of holiness? And again, Second Chronicles chapter 20, 21 says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying. They were in the middle of the battles with so many countries. What they did, and they just went to worship the Lord and sing songs and the beauties and they appointed, appointed and you know, to, to the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. When they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set apicious against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Zir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. What a powerful for the worship. Even that in the army, you know, God is not going to fight with them just like going to do that. And it is in a worship. So, and such a mighty God that we worship. And how much that is we to have, that preparation for the worship and the dedication for the worship, how the beauty of the holiness to worship God, it is an awesome to see in the Bible, you know, how on those days. And even, you know, he, God said to Moses, you make ready these people, make them to be sanctified. What is the sanctified? Take a bath, put a new cloth. And, you know, th that's what God was telling you about the cloth, you about the, you know, taking the bath and to be clean before coming in my presence. That was the God. Today, we think that something that, that's a serious about things. <laughs> Some people, they just lie down and then they come out and they come to the church. People, sometimes they don't even take bath. They don't put, you know, we are going to the temple of God, we should have a, you know, a, a washed cloth. The Bible says, a washed cloth. Not the new cloth or something, washed cloth. So that's what the thing that people, they were being dedicated to the Lord when we come into the presence. They have been so much fear to God. That's why the Bible says you come and worship the Lord with, you know, fear. And, you know, like, uh, so, and submission to the Lord. So that's this worship, worship of the beauty of holiness. And that's what we see how the beauty is. And when they begin to sing and praise us, the Lord set ambushes against the people. And the enemies, they have been beaten up just for the worship. Worship is a powerful tool, even in our life, even in the church, and in every world. So the, there is a, something which is not correct in the worship. People may not be interested in coming into worshiping your God. So that should be a you know, thing in such a way we have to think in our church, how that we can have such a worship, so that that will make the people to come in. Yeah, sometimes. When we start worshiping, very few people are there in the evening service. So there is a time that we have to separate things that how we are preparing for the worship. Yes, we are going to stand before the mighty God, not just like coming and in front of the people. 
we are worshiping the mighty god how that we can bring the beauty of the you know uh, you know the holiness in you know in us so and it says so the power of praise to god will go great things in our life even in our own life in our church life in every word the worship is such a thing it's a powerful one and uh, you know that uh, when you go to that uh, another church we used to go the people they could purposely go for the worship even a big church a mega church in uh, broadway dr wilkinson church and a nine o'clock service eight o'clock seat will be reserved and they will be all full they will come in the morning keep everything in the seat then go for a breakfast there's a uh, mcdonald then they go otherwise you will not get a seat such a crowd the moment we start and the worship will be going on like as though we are in some place so for that the people they go we have to the most of the people has to join in the worship even you know as a choir also raise the voice so that the people will be so we will be you know uh, you know may be influenced to worship the lord in such a way so sing praises to the lord you saints of his and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name for his anger is but a moment his favor is for life weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning that's what the worship in god whatever you have a problems in the outside and whatever the difficulties you are going through when you come to the house of the lord then you stand along with them to worship you forget about everything the joy comes in the morning god will change every situation god will make everything is well good the bible says those who love god and those who have been appointed by god for his purpose for everything works together good in roman chapter 8 28 we see so something will come we may think it is not good for us but even that one card will change it into a good for us that we may not know how card is keeping for us such a things for the anger is the anger is but a moment his favor is for life weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning when we in you know, any situation you start worshiping god just singing god and you will have a peace we forget about everything lord this is the thing it comes against me i cannot do anything i have no strength on that father i will leave it to you i can only i can come and i can worship you god will take it off god will fight for us everything the worship is such a important in our life that's what the main things for the church the worship is so much as to one in jeremiah chapter 10 3 4 it says for the customs of the people are futile for one cuts a tree from the forest the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe how they make a god they go to the forest and cut the tree and they decorate it with all the things with the gold and the silver and they are just worshiping and they don't know that it's going to be perished and in the bible says can they talk can they be carried away by themselves can they walk can they do any good or evil what is the use of all the decorated with the silver and the gold that's what the people were worshiping <laughs> getting la and, and the unknown gods they depend on the man but we have to depend on god but the gods of the world depend on the man for everything how come it will be a god so that's the thing so and the wooden idol is a worthless doctrine So we may think, what about the Christmas tree? <laughs> Sometimes they say, some people, why do we have to have a Christmas tree? The same thing applies, go and bring a tree, then you decorate everything. So for the Christmas time that we do things, the decoration to celebrate the Christmas, not to worship the tree, not to make an idol out of that. No, we don't do that. So many ways we decorated our house. and in the christmas that we decorated with the things just for the children to enjoy and also some guests comes so they will see and it's with all the lights and we are not doing it there's nothing wrong in that i can say you know like the but yeah 
but the lord is the true god and he is the living god and the everlasting king but his wrath the earth will tremble all the nations will not be able to endure his indignation that's why we should always to be fearful to god submit to god and god says i taught you all the good things what is the good things you have to do and he says do righteous things low mercy and submit yourself before the god that's only that i need it from you <laughs> you know that's what the bible says so that's what we have to always see how we can submit to god how that we can have the fear of god and how we will do the righteous things and the love the mercies so such a wonderful thing that we learn from the bible how god is so merciful to us the same way god expects us to be merciful to others how god loved us at the same way god you know for us also to love others so everything god is giving everything what he was doing as the same thing you give it to back a yeah, god is blessing someone to be a blessing to someone else when he called abraham he said i will make a great nation and i will bless you and i will make your name great and you will be blessing to many so the god's blessing what he is we are receiving to give it back to the people so that the people can be blessed those who doesn't have anything that they are in need so that's what the god blesses you know it's more that so but the lord and again when we bless the lord god is going to bless us for the which what we are doing it that that's the thing that we see you know like uh, and um, i sent a message to the parsi many people you know like our church we started there and uh, i you know there you know just i said uh, when we needed some two speakers and immediately two brothers of our church they bought it and they donated it i sent it to them to know that how we love you guys from the loj edison church to our loj parsipani church and we are taking it today and there they nobody will talk about anything at all about anything <laughs> about anything so so the moment what is this the spirit of the lord put it in our heart that wait when we bless them and for which certainly god will bless them what they are doing it anything we do in the name of lord jesus christ the blessing comes from other way in many other ways that's what our experience with the lord always that how god blessed us even though we are not worthy even whatever we have when we give it to someone god bless and multiply and give it to back us this is our experience not just like a you know a theoretical that's what we received other things so the measure we give the measure god has blessed us even multiplied so that's what we see here so but the lord is true god he is the living god and the everlasting king and thus you say said you know thus you shall say to them the gods that have not made the heaven and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under the heaven so they are not gods they will be perished and we worshiping in the living god that who created the heaven and the earth so that's what in our faith and we also believe it and in first timothy chapter 6 17 says command those who are rich in the present age because until unless we tell someone they may not even understand a man will be a filthy rich has all the things money building his wealth and everything but he doesn't know how to bless others even a beggar goes and ask him some give me some a few dollars the moment what he will say no i don't have money he immediately will say he doesn't he is a wealthy guy he is a richest rich guy to give it to a poor for few dollars he say i don't have so do you mean that he is rich <laughs> is is bigger than the other person he has so much money few dollars he cannot give that means he is not a rich so the rich is measured at your giving 
how much more you are giving to that level you want you are you are rich otherwise you are poor only if you don't give anything else you are poor if you cannot be able to you have but you are not able to give it doesn't matter but that's you are poor we cannot consider that because of your bank balance because of all the buildings and the cars you cannot claim that rich when you cannot give a few dollars to a man who needs so that's what you know god is telling about this and you know here it says in first timothy and command those who are rich in the present age not to be haughty not to trust in uncertain riches but in the living god who gives us richly all things to enjoy you know when, when we give a bible to a person you know when we are doing distributing you know, bibles the, the 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 way they receive they were so happy yesterday we were giving the bible on the friday evening one lady she's a hindu lady she was walking in artemina passage she was on the road and then then his father went and gave the bible she said it's bible it's bible she was receiving oh thank you thank you thank you hindu lady you know so we were been so much to see how they are longing for the word of god and whatever the bible we took mostly we they gave it to them in this going around on the pathway in the uh, you know strawberry and blueberry also of in addition we remember it john and i said john was staying here in another in the locality and uh, all the most of the people they stayed in this complex in addition and you know and all the young boys they were standing there all received the uh, tracks and the bibles and uh, you know almost uh, more than 400 500 bibles within last two months we have distributed to the people for our unknown people for the jew for the muslims and for the christians all they have been receiving so beautifully happily and when we look at them and we really be rejoice in that in all the things in first thessalonians chapter 5 18 it says in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ anything you do do it in the name of jesus christ that will bring the happiness to you and again he says let them do good that they be rich in good works ready to give willing to share so this is what the first thessalonians chapter 5 18 says why god is blessing us and we are now we thankful to god how we can thankful to god just by mouth just by word lord you blessed me i am going to be blessing to others in your name that's what the, we thank god that's what the thanksgiving okay, you know that's what we see in proverbs chapter 11 25 say the one who blesses others is abundantly blessed those who help others are helped this is a word of god the one who bless others is abundantly blessed more than what you give that you blessed with so much the god has blessed you when you help someone then you are also helped in a many ways more than that what you help the other person so we will never life that we can experience in everything when we do the things what god does to support things so here in exodus chapter 19 10 it says and the lord sent to moses now it's about the holiness on those days go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let wash their clothes don't come with the same clothes you lay down on the bed then the next day there you put it and come wash your clothes let them be cleansed take bath and in the us has come and in the leviticus 11:44 says for i am the lord your god consecrate yourself therefore and be holy because i am holy even in a small thing can we expect us how we should come before the lord and i was thinking so all the three worshipers if they are putting all white shirts if they worship in the church how it will look i, I was imagining <laughs> you know that that's a pattern that how we can honor god even with our dress when they think people they think they say oh this is a worshipers they are separated they are they are the good you know so in everything we can make a difference 
you know, for God, not for us. He said. So that's what it means to say. And um, Psalm 33, one says, Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. What the expectation? And how that we worship the Lord in the truth and in the, in the, in the, you know, in the, in the spirit. That is what the beauty of the holiness. Because God expects us to be worshipped. There was, you know, when the Samaritan lady that he was asking that you guys are, want us to worship in Jerusalem, but my forefathers were worshipping on this mountain. And Jesus said, now that day is coming. You can worship anywhere, everywhere. And to worship the Lord that you never, you know, how to worship the God. How to worship the, what, what is the splendor of the holiness? That when we worship Him in truth and the spirit, that is the beauty of God. That's what God called us. Not in our flesh, that it means. So that's what it says about here. So that means what, what is the thing, you know, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you just worship, see how it is. That will be entirely different. Normally when you worship, that makes a difference. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the worship, the anointing, when it's an anointing with you, the worship will be different and it will touch the people. That was the mega churches, how they are bringing all people. The main, the worship. People, they come for the worship. You know, so then the crowd, you know, then again they give the sermon and other things, you know, later it follows. So here, so, and again he talks about, you know, you know some, you know, another verse in here, in is here, Psalm 96, 9, Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. In First Chronicles chapter 16, 29 says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. So that's the thing that it was talked about. And again, it's regarding the adornment so the adornment is a decoration, you know, adornment decorated with so much things, in the dress, in the jewels, and so many things, and to merely an outward. So what does it mean? It does not say that you do not de decorate by, you know, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on a fine apparel. God he did not say don't do that. What he say, that should not be a decoration for you, but your, de your decoration is something different for the children of God. On the earth they will be doing all the things, but even then, even when you are wearing a, you know, it is nothing wrong in having a nice hair and in arranging the hair, or wearing gold or putting on apparel, it is nothing wrong. But that only a decoration should not be for you. Your decorations is from your inside. <laughs> the holiness, the righteousness, and all these decorations only God expects us. In First Epistle 3, 4 says, Rather let it be hidden portion of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a you know, gentle and quiet spirit. What is a decoration inside our you know, heart? That is the beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of the Lord than all other you all were decoration. You know, they take it in a wrong way. They say, no, you should not wear any jewel. And then you should not comb your hair. Are they say? No, they don't say. <laughs> and they say, don't, don't put your saris or dresses, come back. That's why I say that, no. Instead of that, what they say, you have to come only with a white dress. What it makes for a white dress for God? The dress is holy. <laughs> and, and, you know, even if you wear a small jewel, they say you should not, you know, come with a jewel. In India, that's what people, they may say, you don't come to the church. Because if you come to our church, only you have to have a white dress. 
You should remove all your jewelries, everything. And they will not give a communion. There are some Pentecostal churches are there. God did not say. God says, better, yeah, you are, you are a woman, you decorate yourself, nothing wrong. But that alone, that should not be a decoration for you. The decoration has to come from your heart. And that will be in a place sitting God. That will be a beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. In the fifth word says, for in the man, you know, in the manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being in submissive to their own husband. Even submitting to their own husband also is a decoration, Bible says, on those days. I don't know it was written on those and not in these days. <laughs> I don't know, maybe God will know what will be, you know, these days will be. So being submitted, by holy women, what well, the man in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves being submissive to their own husband. So, so the inner beauty, how can we say, you know, nowadays, you know, the guys, they wanted to get married, they want to have a very beautiful girl, and that's what their preference, and they say, and they don't care about how she will be, how her heart will be. You know, that's what normally, then thereafter, what they will end up with the problem, that's a different thing. But they all want there. But here it says, what is the beauty that you can see inside? That's why God knows what is the inside. He doesn't look at the outside. God is the one, He doesn't look at the appearance. Look at the outside, what do you wear, what do you don't have, nothing at all. God wants to see how is your heart is. Nothing wrong in decorating outside. But that should not be your adoration, no. You should, the adoration is from the so the mainly the love makes a, yeah, you know, a main part in anybody's life to have the adoration and the declaration, the beauty of the holiness, the love. The love is the prominent one that we see in the Bible about the love. First Corinthians chapter 13, you know, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we love just like, love suffers long and it's kind. Love does not envy, love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, and does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, and thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things, Love never fails. When the love inside, it's pleasing to God, then the beauty of the heart will be just like an adoration and the holiness to God. So that's what we understand from this Bible. So people are mistaken and what you dress, what you don't dress, it's nothing matter for God. Only a proper dress is needed in the church. Whether it's a colored dress or a white dress, it doesn't matter. Other expensive dress, other low dress, it doesn't matter. One of my friend uh, uh, in uh, New York, he was wearing you know, four, you know, like uh, rings <laughs> and the chain also. He will open the button also and he's, he's a Christian, he's going to a traditional church. One day one uh, Pentecost pastor came and he had shaken him, you know, handshake. Then he said, hey, what is this man? You are wearing all the things. Please remove it. Then he said, no, I will not remove it. Uh, so that man then went away. Then when I went, he had told him, he said the right thing to say that I should remove it. Then he told me the story how this man came. Because what he says, this man come with an expensive suit. And he's put a scent, you know, it's so, you know, something is very expensive, perfumes. But now he says to me to remove this, you know, rings, for which he doesn't want to. Then what do you say, Moses, he asked me. I said, uh, brother, 
if you casually you know you are it is your custom that you are simply wearing a ring and nothing about anything then it's okay if you think you want to prove to the others and there are so many 